Hi, welcome to the Revelation. It is our study of um, the unfolding vision that God gave to his follower John um, that wraps up the Bible for us. I mean, it's the last book just before you get to the pages usually with the maps in them. <laughs> and so um, Revelation is that book that uh, is promised to us that there's a blessing when we read it. Um, it's given to us so that we might have hope. And so we now move to Revelation chapter 8, beginning in verses 7, and then probably moving through chapters 10 and then 12. There's a whole lot um, that begins to happen and unfold there. And for us today, the passage, if you're going to focus in on one, would ha take place in Revelation, be maybe beginning in chapter 6, verse 13. But I want to kind of give you a kind of a quick kind of look through what's going on and kind of make sure you're, you're following the story here. Uh, not that you're going to get lost, but it helps me. Um, in Revelation 5, a scroll was presented to the Lamb, we saw that, that was slain, the only one found worthy to open it. It has been gradually unsealed and unrolled, and as it's been unrolled, one form of judgment has come after another until the earth is finally going to be delivered into the hands of the King of Kings, its rightful owner. The seventh seal on that scroll unleashes the seven trumpet judgments, the final judgment of God upon the earth. At the sound of the first trumpet, the earth suffers terrible um, ecological devastation. Uh, verse 7 says, An angel hurls down hail and fire mixed with blood. When it happens, a third of all vegetation is destroyed. With the second trumpet, something like a huge mountain all ablaze is thrown into the sea. That's in verse 8. As a result, a third of the seas turn to blood, and a third of the ships are destroyed. Uh, the third trumpet causes a great star called Wormwood to fall from heaven and poison one-third of the freshwater rivers and springs in verses 10 through 11. Wormwood is a plant with a bitter taste that symbolizes the bitterness of sorrow and calamity. Uh, you find that, go back to the Old Testament book, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 15. It's hard to imagine resulting chaos on earth when a third of the world's population has no clean water to drink. Um, Many people will die as a result of the contaminated water supply. And then the fourth trumpet comes along, and when the fourth trumpet sounds, one-third of the heavens go dark, causing drastic atmospheric changes, uh, at, an extreme swing in temperature. You, know, you hear so often anymore about the dangers of global warming, and, and I often tell followers, you know, you be a good caretaker of the earth, but you don't need to panic about global warming um, because we know what's going to happen and we know how God's going to bring about um, the changes that will take place on earth. This is a reminder of that. These temperature fluctuations of a half a degree or one degree over a long period of time are nothing compared to what's getting ready to happen in this drastic moment. Um, a third of all the heavenly bodies are suddenly going to change their normal functions and positions, including their orbits. And if you go back to Luke 21, Jesus told us about this. He said, we would know that we were living in the last days by the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And as all this is unfolding, John, in his vision in verse 13, suddenly sees an angel or an eagle flying in midair. It warns the inhabitants of the earth that the remaining three trumpets will usher in an era of even greater judgment. And gradually, the earth is being handed over to Satan for the destruction that he will wreak through his agent, the Antichrist. And so that's all getting ready to unfold now. There are some people that when they see that eagle, they say that's symbolic of America in prophecy. Um, but I think you have to make a huge jump to say that. I'm not sure that it's there, but if it makes you feel better, so be it. I mean, I don't think it really matters, but this is that moment where that eagle is introduced. And if you take a look at this, just take a moment and consider what it would be like to be on earth during the events that we just talked about that take place in Revelation chapter 8. You lose friends, co-workers, neighbors in large numbers. You try to contact loved ones, but you have no ability to communicate because the communication systems have been damaged. The news media, if you can get news at all, because it will come in spotty because of all the other changes that will take place, talks about chaos, destruction, and death. And then you begin to hear of a leader who will bring about peace, restore law, restore order, and stabilize the government and the economy and provide all the world's citizens what they need to survive. Nearly everyone in the world, with the exception of those who attain some spiritual discernment, will eagerly follow this leader. 
And of course, this leader is the man of lawlessness talked about in 2 Thessalonians. It is um, the end. His ultimate goal is world domination. He wants to command obedience. He wants the worship of all mankind. This is Satan's big moment. And God gives him a short window to have it as God brings about the events that come that follow. Someone said, what about those verses that we've looked at in chapter 8? And if there's ever a phrase that would describe it, it would be simply this. It is that time when all hell breaks loose. It is that moment where everything that could go wrong goes wrong. And the reason that it's hell on earth is simply because hell on earth is being ushered in for a season. And the Antichrist is getting ready to take his place. Again, as dark as that is and as horrible as that is, the one thing that you have to remember if you're a, if you're a follower is simply that if you are obedient and you are faithful, then you don't have to sweat this. And that God is going to take care of you and He's going to get you where you need to be, when you need to be there. And in the midst of all of this chaos, you can have a calm in knowing that God is in control and He loves you. And that's why He tells us what's going to happen, because He doesn't want us to worry. So don't worry. Be blessed. We are now in the dog days of the book of Revelation. And what happens is rough and it's tough and it's a little bit scary for those that don't know Jesus. But if you do know Jesus, you can take heart. And remember that he has, by his own proclamation, overcome the world. And so, read the book, be blessed, and God bless you. I'll join you next time as we look at Revelation.